guys. I'm flying to that thing. Hopefully the GoPro is recording. baby it's bumpy Nothing like a wingtip drag to wake you up, man! Like a good old wingtip drag in the morning. Whoa, it's bumpy. Man, look at this thing. I love the different color of rock as you go up. Look at it! Oh my god, there's no like, crash lane there. What's all this falling rock? Where'd you come from, eh? Try fly around the backside and see how bumpy it gets. I'll do it for the leaves. Let's see how bumpy this gets. Look at that one red line. Like what made that one line right there red? Who knows? Whoa! Zombie bumps. Hey, there's a ladder right there. Can you imagine fly camping up here? Oh my gosh. I think I could land right now on that. I got a scale of 1 to 100. How stupid of an idea is that? Probably. Have I done stupider? Nah. Am I going to try it? Hey guys, future Trevor here. I uh, just wanted to share a couple thoughts that maybe I didn't share in the video. Um, the only reason I really landed on the top of this mountain is because it was like perfectly smooth wind. If the wind had been just a little bit bumpy, had it been a little bit over to the left or a little over to the right or up and down, uh, or even a little bit of a rotor, I definitely wouldn't have pushed it. But on this day, as you saw, I did a reverse launch. Uh, as I was flying over that little spot, I did it twice. As I was flying over, I was testing just how smooth the air was. 
And on my final approach, had I felt any form of turbulence, I would have immediately aborted, but it was perfectly smooth. And I just couldn't help myself. Anyways, back to the video. Absolutely nothing. Don't fail me now, glider control skills. I can't believe I landed on top. Oh my god, that was so cool. That was so cool. <laughs> I have accomplished. If I do nothing else this entire flight, I am accomplished. Holy crap, oh my gosh. That was like the stupidest thing I've ever done and it worked. You gotta send it, bros. You gotta risk it for the biscuit. And today I got that biscuit, baby. Please do not try that at home. I, and nobody else try that. The risk of failure is too high. All right, guys. On a quick little serious note here, uh, you have to weigh the risk reward for things when you're flying. Landing on the top of that thing was the stupidest thing I could have ever done. If for some reason I lost control or the wind wasn't there and the glider fell behind me, I'd have to figure out how to either A, launch off of that hill or B, get the gear down. Neither one of them is something I wanted to try and figure out. And so it's like, well, it's not that difficult to fail that. I mean, if you, you know, I could have blown it, the wind could have changed, it could have hit a gust, it, you know, something could have happened out of my control that could have caused me to fail that landing, and that could have been ugly, and, and so you shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't have done it. You have to ask yourself, like, the risk-reward kind of equation, and the reward of that, doing a touch and go on top of that, although cool, yeah, how many people could stand, stand on the top of that thing? The risk is way too high, so if you're not someone who's extremely extremely experienced uh, has a high level of skill and is an absolute idiot I wouldn't try it <laughs> not an idiot but but it was kind of a dumb move you know, I, you know coolest thing I think it, oh my gosh it was so cool who's done a touch and go on the top of this freaking rock look at it I didn't touch and go on that thing let's check these views out eh boys we got a. I wanted to climb to the top of this. My car's over there. I don't know how much gas I got, so. But over there, we got a nice mountain, some uh, windmills. I want to fly up around that mountain. There's actually an airport uh, over there that I want to try and figure out uh, whose it is and if I can fly there. Uh, then I don't know what that way is, but I'd love to go explore that direction. And Moab is that way over there, another 20 miles or so, which uh, I do love to fly around Moab. 
This thing, every time you drive past going to Monticello or whatever it's that direction, you always see that and you're like, man, wouldn't that just be the coolest thing to fly? So I did. So I did. I didn't wake up early enough. As you can see, the sun's already up. It's already like 9 o'clock. I tend not to be good at waking up early in the mornings. <laughs> Let's see if I can empty some sand out. This is how you do it, all right? You flick it over, and then right here on top, you shake it. You flick it over upside down, and shake it. Look at that, I emptied all the sand out. Just like that. Shake it. Flick it upside down, shake it. All the sand comes out. Okay guys, future Trevor here again. I wanted to point something out in this moment. As you saw, I was coming in super slow. There was enough wind for me to top land the mountain. As I landed and I tried to turn around, I kind of got stuck and you saw I had to straighten back up and get back onto the power. Now, you'll always notice that we, as in the supers, that's Dell, myself, our students, our helpers, the people that tend to fly with us, we don't kill our motors until we've completely and successfully disabled the glider. And the reason we don't kill the motor until we fully disable the glider is because you have to have options. In this moment, all of a sudden I got pulled. I tried to turn and I couldn't turn. I got yanked back to forward kiting. And if I hadn't have had power to save me, I could have turtled in this moment or fallen on my butt or spun around or any of those situations. But because I have the power, because I have the motor on, I then have the ability to add that power to keep me moving forward or even climb out and go back around. Now you'll notice a little bit later after I've already turned around and the glider's on the ground, I still didn't kill the motor until I successfully had the glider in uh, either her hands or I felt it was fully disabled. Again, the reason is because what if the wind all of a sudden picks up to 10, 15 miles an hour, yanks me into the sky? Well, if I have the motor on, I can just hit power and control the everything, get under control, flying backwards, come down, land. I have the ability to have options again. So I always try and keep the motor on until the glider has successfully been disabled. Anyways, back to the video. There's a lot of wind. That's good. 